Hello, how are you today? How's things? So, we've got a case today that I think that maybe 50% of you will say, this is a good case, and maybe 50% of you say, no, that's not been done very well at all. So, it's it's a really interesting case, and I want to kind of showcase uh, this tooth, because it, it, it shows up a lot of um, difficulties that you can have when um, doing a reroot treatment. So if we look at the x-ray here, this is um, a, a case of an upper right two, okay? It has um, a, a failing uh, composite filling in it, and it's got a, uh, a GP point, um, which is, you know, fitted into the canal space here, but it doesn't look like it's um, very well condensed or it doesn't look like it's part of, um, you know, the, the sort of, it doesn't look like it's filling the root canal space. So we can kind of suggest that maybe the, 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 uh, there's voids. Okay, and when we have voids, obviously we have um, we have uh, where bacteria proliferate, and then obviously you can see this huge infection here. So, um, to cut a very long story short, you know, I am very concerned about the size of the lesion apically on this tooth, and I suspect that um, this tooth is is likely going to require some kind of uh, microsurgery in in the future. But um, always at the first instance, what we want to do is we want to make sure that the root filling is 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 placed well before we do any you know root end surgery. Um, another thing to sort of have a look at here is that the the GP looks short of the radiographic apex. Okay, so when you're sort of um, when you when you are assessing a case before you do a reroute treatment, um, you know this is the kind of thing you want to have a little have a little think about. Now, again, if you look at a lot of my videos, you'll notice that the radiographic apex and the actual anatomical apex aren't always usually the same, but it's always something to have a little think about, okay? Especially when there's a huge lesion here. And another thing I wanna be looking at is maybe some sort of um, uh, complex uh, apical anatomy. So these are all the things that I'm thinking of. Um, and, and really, I think to myself, you know, this just looks like one GP point, no sealer, and this will be really, really easy to remove. And, it, you know, it transpires as we go on, you'll find out that it isn't easy to remove. Okay. So in the first instance, um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to access the tooth. I've, I've, I've placed rubber dam. Um, you know, usually when you access a tooth uh, for the first time during root canal, you know, you do it without rubber dam. But in this case, um, the GP point is, is really obvious, so it kind of acts as like a marker. And you can just put the uh, rubber dam on straight away. And straight away, when I find the GP, I, I'm trying to pry it away from, from the wall using this DG endodontic probe. And it's quite well compact, actually. And again, if you look at a lot of my videos, I like to use the screw, screw and pull technique. And this technique, is where we get a headstrong file and we screw it into the GP point and then we pull it out and and ideally what we'd like to see is the whole GP pulled out in one but actually as you can see here the uh, the GP is coming out in very small pieces which is annoying it's not you know it's not it's not the end of the world but it's annoying because you really what you want is everything just pulled out straight away and um, you know I, I screw this in again and then you can just see here that a little bit more of the GP pieces come out and at this point I'm thinking to myself you know I've got most of the GP out what well, I think I've got most of the GP out and I am gonna try and take a working length x-ray using a size 10k file and it transpires that I just can't get a zero reading so it, it's it's likely that there's GP remaining so what I do do is get a, a size 10K file and I just check to see how far I can actually get, um, you know, and, and, and as I screw this uh, size 10K file to length, I pull it out and then I check the working length and I can get to about 22.5 millimeters. Um, and what I would say is that um, the size 10K file is, is likely slipped um, in, uh, beside the GP points. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get a size 25 H file and I am also going to measure it to 22 millimeters. And um, as you place this uh, size 25 H file into place, you can see that it isn't slipping past the GP point and it's screwing into something rubbery. And again, it's just 
um, just just to, just vet lots and lots of time and patience to try and screw into the GP and to try and pull out the remaining um, the, the obturation material. And essentially for the next half or an hour or 45 minutes, there's lots of um, uh, very, very gentle and, and patient picking away at uh, the GP using lots and lots of different files. And essentially what I'm getting is a bit of a stop. Okay, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to get a definder. Okay, I'm going to define, I'm going to make a very, very small bend in the end, and I'm going to very, very gently just push this defines into length and just small, small movements. And then you'll notice that just at the last moment, I get a little bit of a drop. So it, it, it shows them that the end of the tooth um, isn't completely straight. As it reaches the apex, there's a small bend where maybe the portal of exit um, doesn't go out the end, but to the side of the tooth. And you'll notice if you've taken out a lot of teeth and you've inspected the ends, you'll notice that a lot of the uh, portal of exits are, um, are not right at the end. And you'll also notice here that when you take the working length of the apex locator, um, when the file goes all the way up to the hilt, it's a little bit too long. And then when I bring back the file and I do working length, it's a little bit too narrow for the rubber stopper. So if I were to put a rubber stopper on here now, um, the, the, the working length would be too short, but if I take it off, it'd be too long. A little trick here is just to get a Williams probe and you can see that it's about 0.5 millimeters um, away from the hilt and you know if we you know if we look at the the the, the measurement here and um, we notice that they're up to the hilt well when I say up to the hilt I mean up to the um, up to the hand uh, part the purple part it's 25 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to minus 0.5 from this point and we know the working length okay and this um, provides a little bit of a challenge um, when we're using subsequent files. So we're using the HyFlex 15 uh, Glypath file here. The rubber stopper is smaller, but when we measure 24.5 millimeters, which is the working length, it's about halfway on the stopper. And we're just gonna, just gonna use that measurement. What I would say is it's, it's be very, very careful when you're using these types of measurements, when you're using half a stopper. You have to be really, really careful because it's not, um, it's not as predictable as, as say, you know, using it at the end of the stopper. And it's at this point where I think, well, I've cleaned everything out. I assumed I've cleaned everything out. I'm gonna take a comfort radiograph. And obviously I'm gonna measure the GP point at 24. So it's 0.5 millimeters away from the, from the zero reading on the apex locator. And when we take the X-ray, we can see here that the GP is within the radiographic apex. Okay, it's not right at the end but I can see that there are fragments of GP at the end. So I know now that I haven't removed all of the GP. And I suppose in retrospect, you know, you know, there's an argument to say that really what you need to do here is that you need to take a, um, an X-ray to check if you removed all the GP. And, um, you know, would I say that I do that every time? No, no, I don't. A lot of the time when I'm doing um, reroute treatments, I can see the vast majority of the canal space. Um, so again, hindsight's always 20-20, isn't it? And this is why we take subsequent x-rays. So to try and remove some of these fragments, I'm going to do it, try and do it the easy way, okay, because I'm lazy, of course. And um, what I'm doing here is I'm using lots and lots of irrigants, and I'm gonna try and activate that irrigant. And um, you know, I do this for a good 15 minutes and um, and I just cannot remove all of the GP. And you can see with the X-ray here that there's still this kind of GP fragment still remaining and I just can't remove it. Okay, now usually in this case, what I like to use is the XP Endo Shaper. Okay, and I've done a, I've done a video about this fantastic file. And um, the problem with this is at the moment, I am at a different practice and I haven't got one of these XP Endo Shapers. So a really, really good tip here is if you have um, fragments of GP remaining on the walls of um, the, the, the canal and you can't remove them, just with normal irrigation is that you take a h file okay and you make a little bend in the end 
and you need to get a quite a high diameter um, uh, H file because you want some stiffness. And then what you do is you sort of sort of scrape the edges of the canal right round and right round to try and dislodge some of this GP. And as you can see here, there's actually a little bit of GP um, already that's dislodged within the sort of irrigants. And as you irrigate it, you can see some of the fragments coming out. And, um, you know, I've got all in the time in the world for this. I've obviously got to think about length control. I don't want to be pushing these types of files out to the end. And I am just just making sure that I am irrigating, activating, and using this H-file technique just to scrape it around. And as you can see here with the radiograph, all the GP's gone. It's perfect. So I um, know that I have completely shaped the tooth. I am now going to use my uh, final irrigation protocol with the EDTA 70% and um, the uh, sodium hypochlorite. And then once all that's done, we're going to dry with some paper points, okay? And I'm just using the match cone paper points here from, uh, from Wave 1 Gold. Once we have dried the canal with paper points, we're going to go for our obturation. And I'm going to use a one fill here with our, um, with our visco tips. And I'm not going to be shy about filling this canal up with, um, with biceramic because I know the canal is very, very wide. And I'm going to take my matched cone, the one that I cone that I used last time, and I'm going to very, very, very slowly push this cone to length. Okay. Um, again, what I don't want to do is I want to push this cone down really, really fast because I don't want to push um, lots and lots of sealer out the end. And also you'll get a vapor lock where you can't push the, the cone down because the sort of the liquid is getting in the way. And as we take the x-ray, you can see here that there's, there might be an argument to say right at the apical end is, is, is that sealer or is that GP? Okay. So um, I think in the first instance, um, I, I don't like the way that it's sort of bending around. Okay. And what I do do here is I, again, I do the cardinal sin of uh, bioceramics, which I did last time, is I'm using going to use a little bit of heat. So what I want to achieve here is I want to try and push some more bioceramic into the apical end. And, and the, the, the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to use a, a heated plugger. Now, the problem with using heat and bioceramics is twofold. One, apparently, if you use heat, it desiccates the dentin, so it gets rid of the water, and the bioceramic relies on water for it to set. You, what also you'll notice is if you use heat with a bioceramic, the bioceramic just goes all a bit funny, goes a bit clay-like, and, um, and I'm only assuming that that kind of denatures it and then stops it from working. So you'll notice here when I, um, when I use the heated plugger, I am using it right down the center of the GP, so I'm not touching the sides. And what I'm trying to achieve here is I'm trying to achieve uh, further apical pressure on the GP to try and push the GP and vis-a-vis -vis the sealer uh, uh, to length. And then once I've used the, uh, the, the, the heated plugger here, I'm just gonna um, just, just, just tidy it up a little bit. And you'll notice that um, when you use a heated plugger, the GP remains warm and soft for a while. And then you can kind of, um, you know, just, just sort of push uh, the, the use the Mac 2 plugger just to kind of like tidy up the end and um, again if you look at the x-ray it's 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 it looks a little bit better but it, it looks kind of the same and um, you know there's a there's, there's a there's a very very strong argument to say here that this um, the, the apical end on this isn't filled completely and I know um, half of the root canal dentists here are gonna say that that is not filled I think um, after doing many, many root canals and, um, and and thinking that this isn't filled adequately, I would probably say that it is filled adequately. So I have done many, many root canals in the past and sometimes I've thought to myself, oh, you know, it doesn't look too great at the end. And, um, and then subsequently the tooth's either been taken out, you know, it's not happened often, but it does happen. And you can inspect the end and you can visually see that the, the all the sealers at the end and it and it looks looks fantastic, um, and also we've we've taken comb beam CT scans of teeth that look inadequate on the X-ray, but actually when you take the CBCT, it looks fantastic. Now, obviously taking X-rays and taking CBCTs, it's not very predictable, is it? You know, it, you've got to um, account for scatter, and then you've got to account for sort of these kind of radiolucencies that occur. 
um, uh, either side of uh, ra very, very radio opaque things on, on x-rays. So I think on balance, I'm very, very happy with this tooth. Um, and, and, and it's a super, super result, you know, obviously there's a couple of little voids here and there in the sort of coronal third, but overall very, very happy. And, you know, if we look at the previous x-ray, it's a much, much um, improved image. Another thing I would say about the apical end is I think that this is sealer rather than GP. Now, if we uh, sort of look at our cone fit uh, radiograph, now I know the cone fit radiograph does have a little bit of a fragment, but what you'll notice is the cone fit radiograph is to length, it's to the zero reading on the apex locator, but it is short of the radiographic apex. And I think what's happened is um, if we look here, if we annotate here, it's at this point here where I think the GP is, and then this remaining piece of uh, radio opaque material is the sealer that's sort of squirted into the apical end. So this is why, a further reason why I think the tooth has been obturated clearly. So there you have it, another case, another Friday. As always, if you have any questions, you have any, um, any criticisms, if you disagree what I've done today, put it in the comment section below and let's have a debate and I'll see you next week. Bye bye.